أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. There's a place at Dar al-Islam in New Mexico. If you go outside in the masjid, all right, there's a, a place where the water drips from the roof, just outside the masjid. And there's a brick there. And I've watched that brick diminish over the years. I've been going to Dar al-Islam almost 20 years. And I've seen the brick, it gets deeper and deeper because of this drop that's going on. And, and the heart is like, it becomes like a rock. You know, like a hijara or a shaddu qaswa or even harder than a rock. But Allah says that from rocks, they're ones that birth forth springs. And so the hardening of the heart is, that's what dunya does to the heart. Yuqasi al qalb. It, ma it makes a hard heart. There's people who hear the Quran, it has no effect on them. They hear it. People, people used to die hearing the Quran. Wallahi, I swear to God, people used to literally die. They're, we have it in the books. They would hear a verse of Quran, they would die. The, the Sahaba heard the Qur'an and they were suddenly in China and in Morocco. I mean, these are, they called them lizard eaters. The Persians looked down on the Arabs. They were nobody. They were an insignificant historical people just living in this desert. They never went anywhere. They had rihlat al shita'i wal sayf. They went to Yemen and they went to uh, Syria. That was it. So what was it that suddenly they're in China and, and Morocco? Spain. Spain. I mean, what was it? What, what was that? It was because their hearts burst. You know, they got filled with this incredible light. It's like a, it's like, you know, it's, it's a taqa noawiyah. You know, it's, it's the real nuclear uh, power. And that's the real nuclear power. But it's not toxic. It does the opposite. Like their nuclear power destroys everything. This nuclear power brings everything to life. You know, it really, it restores life to dead civilizations. That would happen. Suddenly the Persians, they were a moribund uh, civilization, dead. And they got brought back to life. Look at the Turks. You, you know what the Turks were before they were Muslim? They were Byzantine Christians. They were at the end of their, they were at the end of their civilization. And Islam came and brought them back to life. Go to Turkey and look at what they built. They were a dead civilization. It infuses people. That's what this religion does. So anyway, this is the month of Quran and the, the beauty of Ramadan. Ramadan's amazing. It really is, if you think about it. And even if you don't think about it, it's amazing. But at least when you think about it, you get open to what's amazing about it. But, you know, all over the world, people are, are fasting. A billion point three people. Even the bad Muslims fast. That's a miracle. No, because seriously, I mean, shayateen get chained up. And you can't deny it. You find things easier to do in Ramadan. You can't, you can't lower your eyes in other months. Ramadan comes, you can lower your eyes. What's going on? You know, you've got your food and drink. People graze all day long during the year. Ramadan comes, I'm fasting. People stop backbiting. They stop arguing. Seriously, what is that? It's amazing. Because it's in order that you learn taqwa for the rest of the year. Problem is the madrasa closes and, and that's it. But yet, it's supposed to be continuing ed throughout the year. You know, you're supposed to go back. Like you have uh, CE units like doctors. You, have to, you lose your license if you don't keep up. So it's the same with Ramadan anyway. I did this with my children tonight. And I was just thinking about it. It's just such an amazing... I mean, the whole Qur'an, mashallah, but I was thinking about this uh, surah tonight. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, a'udhu billahi min shaitan ar-Rahim. Allah says, la uqsimu bihada al-balad. I swear by this city. And they say Allah doesn't swear by anything that's not immense. Like all the oaths that Allah makes, the, the moon, the sun, it's all momentous things. And he swears by Mecca. And Mecca is a sacred city. And it always has been. It's a sacred spot on the earth. It's a very strange place. Geologically, it's very unusual. If you go around the world, there's very few places that are similar to Mecca geologically. But the actual, the Kaaba is built there. And it's built on, there's actually three major principles that it's built on. It's aligned. Kaaba is actually aligned. Ibn Abbas mentions this. It's aligned to the winds the four winds, because the Arabs had four winds. There's four winds. We used to have it in this culture. People don't know winds anymore because they don't live with nature. Winds are very important to, to life. Winds pollinate. 
uh, winds do immense things. That we have a, a global system of winds, and people are ignorant of it. One of the things that all this global warming is doing is it's disrupting the system of the winds around, around the planet. You know, if you look on old maps, do you know how they have the four, uh, in the four corners they have the clouds blowing? The wind, that's wind. Because people knew about that. Like you had the Zephyr, you have the Levantir, you have the Borealis. You had, they, they actually had terms like the Arabs because they have the Sabah, Rihu Sabah, the Dabur, the, the Shimal. They had the same thing. So people knew about these winds. And if you notice winds here, if you're attentive to it, what you'll notice is they come from the same directions throughout the year. They're discernible. They're not crazy. There's an actually incredible system of winds there. So the Kaaba is aligned. Each wall is aligned to a wind direction that was coming into Mecca. But it's also aligned to the moon rise and the moon set. So it's, there's an actual alignment with the moon. And this, this is, archaeoastronomy is all over the planet. You'll find archaeoastronomical sites. Ancients were very, very obsessed with aligning sacred buildings to the heavens. So you'll find it all over. But the Kaaba is not an exception. It's, it's actually the rule, probably, that the other ones were based on. But what's extraordinary, one of the extraordinary things about the Kaaba is it's actually aligned to the rising of a star in the south, which is called Canopus. Canopus. The Arabs call it Suhail. If you look up Canopus on, on you know, Sheikh Google, you'll, <laughs> what you'll find is Canopus is a very unusual star because according to NASA, it's the single most important star for celestial navigation. So all of the satellites are aligned to Canopus. All the space exploration is aligned to Canopus. So when the people of the earth, the, the people of Dunya of the earth, want to go into the celestial sphere, they have to use Canopus to guide them. And that's what the Kaaba is aligned to, is this star. Because that's our celestial. When we need to navigate, we want our prayers to go up to the heavens. And we don't want them to lose their way. So the Kaaba itself is aligned to the single most important star for celestial navigation. And that's an ayah from Allah. So Mecca is sacred for many reasons. Ibrahim Ali built that. And so Allah is swearing by the, the city. And then he says, Wa anta hillun al barad. You are a lawful citizen of this city. This is citizenship is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Human beings have a right to be here by the mere fact that they're born. You know, the fact that you were born, you, you came into existence, that means you have a right to exist. Allah brought you into existence, so you have a right to exist. If you have a right to exist, you have a right to occupy space. I mean, you have a, you're, you're a lawful citizen of, of where you're from. And nobody can take that away from you unless they oppress you. It's unjust. So, not only that, you're free to think. Because Allah gave you an intellect. You're free to believe, you're free to disbelieve. That's a, a right of human beings. And so the Prophet ﷺ disbelieved in the idols. And so they persecuted him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, What you're lawfully in this city, you have a right to be here. By the parent and what he gives birth to. We have created the human being in toil. Kabada, yukabidu, means to struggle with something. Kabad is difficulty, it's toil, it's struggle. That's the nature of life. If you look at children, you know why children can't talk before they can walk? Because children usually can walk at about one. Walking is hard. It is. Watch children learn to walk. Because if they could talk, they would never learn to walk. Because every time they tried to do it, somebody would say, you can't do that, don't waste your time. You'll never do that, it's too hard. <laughs> Seriously, children, it's amazing. They, they get up, they fall down. It doesn't stop them. Why? Because they see everybody else is walking and they want to do what everybody else is doing. That's a human nature. That's why people imitate by nature. Children imitate adults and adults imitate other adults. That's why leaders are the most important people in a society. Because they determine the behavior of people. When you have leaders that are profligates, everybody behaves like profligates. When you have leaders that dress like prostitutes, 
Everybody dresses like prostitutes. When you have leaders that cheat and lie and, and are venal and corrupt and, and, murder. and, and murder, then you, ha then you have people doing that. That's their behavior. It's based on the leaders. And that's why our leader is the Prophet We don't take, we're, we don't want those other leaders. Because he, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا You have in him the best example. So don't settle for less than the best. Don't, why settle for less than the best? He didn't have tattoos. I'm not going to wear a tattoo. He, he, didn't, he didn't dress immodestly. I'm not going to dress immodestly. He dressed with dignity. He didn't wear t-shirts. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi never wore t-shirts. He didn't wear billboards, you know, buy Meccan, buy Medina dates. Seriously, why are you going around advertising for these people? Free advertising, you don't even have a contract with them. They have a contract with that company that you bought the t-shirt from. So why, why, seriously, why are people doing that? They're walking billboards. But that's the kind of culture that uh, is created when you don't have prophetic guidance. So Allah says the human being is created in struggle. Your life is going to be struggle. That's a given. Ibn Abbas said everything in life is tribulation, ibtida. So if you don't have any tribulation, just be grateful. Because the tribulation is the norm. And many of the people of this science in Islam said, there's one of two things, you're either mu'afa or mubtala. You're either in tribulation or you're free of tribulation. If you're free of tribulation, Allah will send the people of tribulation to you. And if you turn them away in contempt, Allah will try you. That's what happens. People of tribulation will come to you needing help. So if, if you ignore them, then Allah will give you tribulation. So it's one of the two. You're either mu'afa or mubtala. That's it. Liyabluwakum. So the humans are in kabad. Ayahsubu an la yaqdira alayhi ahad. Does he think... Does the human being think nobody has power over him? Nobody can constrain him? Nobody can... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can take everything you have and take it all away in, in one moment. Literally. He can take your health away from you. You can have a stroke. Literally. Young people have strokes. You'd be 30 years old. Prime health, everything. Everything's going great. Whoosh, suddenly you're paralyzed. You can get Guillain-Barre. Allah can take it away at any moment. He can take your family away from you. He can take your wealth away from you, your health. It's just everything like that, just in one quick swoop. So people don't think that that's not the... يَقُولُ أَهْلَكْتُ مَا لَنُبْدَ I've consumed vast quantities of wealth. He boasts about his consumption. You know, human beings, I've consumed vast wealth. You know, I mean, somebody gave $35 million yesterday to the opera in a city of homeless people. Mm. And she said, I just wanted to share this with so many people. And I'm thinking, so many people? Who goes to the opera? No, seriously, so many people? That, that's, that's like 0.00001% of the population go to the opera. But that's the human state. A very old person, everybody's applauding, you know, how wonderful, how selfless for the opera. And, and there's people that don't even have homes in the same city. That's just amazing. That's the human condition. That's how disconnected people are from reality. I mean, if I had $35 million, I, would I give that to the opera? Seriously. It's just amazing. So, does he think nobody can see him, the human being? You think you can do all your nefarious deeds, like this guy, you know, Foley, you know, sending emails. Now he's disgraced, but Allah saw him. Now just because people see him, he's disgraced, and, but Allah saw him. You know, so you, you can hide things, but in the end of the day, they're going to come out. And there's no hiding on the Day of Judgment. It all comes out. It's called an ard. You know what al-ard is? It's when you see everything, your whole life. You have to watch the whole thing. And you, you can edit it here now. You know, you have pro-cut. Like you edit mistakes out. Harun, that's what we do, don't we? Like when I make mistakes on the podcast. Seriously, I make mistakes. You know, they make mistakes. They edit out and then you look great, you know, no mistakes. 
But there were, there were mistakes. But we edited it out. You cut, that's called toba. You edit those mistakes out. Still for the lie, made a mistake. You need to make the toba. That's the cut. You make the edit. Seriously, that's what it is. So you're editing your life's movie. That people are, everybody's going to watch it on, why do you think there's 50 million years, you know, you sit there on the day of judgment, everybody has to go through their life. People like watching stories, they watch movies all the time. People like to watch movies. The Umul Qiyam is going to be very interesting. No, seriously, it's going to be really amazing. You're going to see, like Hitler, the whole thing. <laughs> the uncensored version. The uncensored, unexpurgated version. And everybody has to do it. So Allah promises that the people that made Toba, Ya Satar. But Ibn Atayilah says, how foolish the human being is. He wants Allah to give him sitr from people, but he's not worried about the sitr from Allah. In other words, if you're really intelligent, who cares what other people think? Because <laughs> they're all like you. They're in the same jam you're in. I mean, the only one that really makes any serious concern is Allah. So if you're not concerned about Him, that's what He's saying. Alam yarahu ahad. Does He think nobody sees Him? Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alam nijallahu ainain. We gave Him two eyes. We gave you sight. You don't think we can see you? We gave you vision. We created vision. We gave you the ability to see. And, and we've limited your seeing because we see everything. But we just want to look. What you can see, we can see everything. So you can see some things, we can see everything. What he said in Washavatain, and we gave him a tongue and two lips. Because if you have a tongue without lips, you can't talk. If you have lips without a tongue, you can't talk. That's what you need to talk. A li two lips and a tongue. Lips are very important. They're an amazing gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the lips. You know. And Allah put like so much delight in language, but also in, in love and in kissing and all those things. It's the lips and tongue. It's all, you know, what gifts Allah gave him, the lips and the tongue. Do you know? Alam naja'allahu lisan. You know, we gave you a tongue and lips and look at what you enjoy. You can you can say what you want, what you need. You know, you can kiss your spouse, get pleasure. All those things. We gave we gave you that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wahadainahum najdain. And we guided you down the two roads. We showed you these two roads. There they are, right in front of you. Two roads. Khair and Shar. Khair is, is the right road. You come to a fork in the road. One goes right, the other goes left. The right road is the difficult one. Going uphill. The left one going downhill. Now most people, they come to the road and they see the uphill one and they see the downhill one and they're going to the same place. They're going to the same place. They're both going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from where you started. So most people, they'll say, oh, that's an easy road. I'm going to go down that road. Because easy. Shahwa, you know, your appetites. Hufat al jannatu bin makari. We surrounded paradise with unpleasant things. Wahufat al nar bin shahwat. And we surrounded the hellfire with pleasant things, things you desire. That's the test. So Allah showed these two roads. One's an easy road. The other is a difficult road. The problem is, when you get to the end of those two roads, there's another journey. If you took the hard road on the first part of the journey, the second part is really easy. It's so much easier. But if you took the easy road on the, on the second one, it's a disaster. And there's a sign. When you come up to these two roads, the one says, the first part of this is really difficult. But then, it's really easy for infinity. And then it says on the other one, the first part of this road is really easy, but then it's really difficult for infinity. So the aql, you know, they did a test in a social science. This was a test they did. They took children at five years of age and they offered them two cookies now. Right? They said, you can have a cookie now, or if you wait 10 minutes, I'll give you two cookies. 
Seriously, this was a test they did. And then they followed for 20 years, these kids. And they found consistently that the children that deferred gratification were far more successful in the world than the children that wanted instant gratification. I mean, they, they, it's an amazing study that somebody devised to think of doing it. But that, that's the whole secret right there. It's about people that want it now. You want this immediate gratification. And you put off what's coming later. It's just like this country is borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. One day the debts fall due. You can't just keep borrowing. But they don't want to think about 20 years from now. 20 years from now, my child will be 23 years old. That's not far away. So he's going to inherit all of the mistakes of this generation because all they wanted was the quick way. Print up paper money and just keep borrowing money and keep borrowing money. That, that is what human beings do. They want instant. They don't want to put off. They don't want to think about what's coming down the road. So that's what Allah says. He, he guides the two roads. And one of them, he says, Won't you go up the steep ascent? You know, this steep road, it's difficult in the beginning, but the beauty of this road is like in Dante's Purgatorio. He, he wrote a book about the mountain of Dunya, climbing up this mount Purgatorio, which is getting beyond the seven deadly sins. And on that mountain, what he said is, the mountain, unlike other mountains, it gets easier as you go up. Most mountains, it gets harder as you go up. But this mountain gets easier as you go. Initially, it's really difficult. But as you move up, and that's the spiritual path, Al-Khalil said, قَلَّ مَنْ أَبْصَرَ ثُمَّ قَلَّ مَنْ أَرَادَ ثُمَّ قَلَّ مَنْ سَلَكَ ثُمَّ قَلَّ مَنْ وَصَلْ How few people see the path. And from those who see it, how few people desire it. And from those who desire it, how few people actually set out on it. And from those who set out on it, how few people arrive. Because it's arduous. It's a, it's a difficult journey. And so... That the, Allah is saying, won't, won't they try the steep ascent? What will convey to you what this steep ascent is? I mean, the really quick way to God. If you want to get there quickly. Freeing the prisoner. Freeing the bondsman. Freeing the person in slavery. And this isn't just slavery, like physical slavery. This is slavery, people that are enslaved to their desires people that are enslaved to their lowest nature, people that are enslaved to dunya. It's freeing those people. That's the work of the prophets. They're here to free the slaves, to make you a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to free you from being a slave of yourself. That's their whole reason for existence. They're not here for any other reason. The Prophet went, he went to God. He was in the presence of God, but he came back. Not because, he, he, who did he come back for? He didn't come back for himself. He was with God. He came back for humanity. That's why he came back. He didn't come back for himself. He, that was it. He'd reached the pinnacle. He was right there in the presence of God. His, his mind didn't belie what he was actually experiencing. He was in the presence of God. Divine presence. And he came back for people to help them. To, to, and he gave all this incredible guidance. You know, Muslims look at the Jews and all these verses in the Quran about how the Jews turned away from God and God gave them all this guidance and they left it and then all this punishment came to them. They think they're talking about the Jews. <laughs> That's just talking about people that are given guidance and leave guidance. I mean, you want to know why the Muslims are in the situation they are? Read the Quran. Read what happened to the previous communities who were given guidance and turned away from the guidance. Look what happens to them. And, and don't say we weren't forewarned. So, feeding on, on those difficult days. You know, days of hunger. When people are hungry. Giving them nourishment. And again, that's a spiritual meaning as well. Teaching people. Uh, nurturing their souls. Giving them uh, something, there's so many people out there just dying 
of hunger, spiritual hunger, real hunger. I mean, they're spiritually dying of hunger. The, if you could see their spiritual souls, you, you see their corpulent bodies. The reason their bodies are so fat is because their souls are starving. If you could see, if, if the veil could be lifted and you could see the spiritual reality, you'd see skeletons walking around. Outside, I guarantee you, I'm not making this up. You would see people walking around like Auschwitz survivors. That's their spiritual state. If there was spiritual disability, nobody would be working. No, seriously. If they had spiritual disability, nobody would be working. They'd all be on spiritual disability insurance. Because that's, that's the human condition right now. Go out there and look at it. So Allah is saying, you want to know how to get quickly to God? Feed starving people. That's why Sahaba, they were out there spreading this deen. They wanted the quick way to God. They wanted to get there. And they were like, this, this, I can do it by this? Go out and feed people? And they did it physically. That's what, but the spiritual feeding of people, right? Yatim and da maqaraba, people without a father, without a spiritual father. Who's our father? Abraham. They don't even know who their father is. They're yatim, they're cut off. You have to go out and find them. You know, these people, orphans. They're spiritual orphans. They've lost their spiritual family. It's a spiritual family. They don't have a spiritual family. They're orphans. Going out and, and, and adopting an orphan, a spiritual orphan, and making them your brother. Giving them a spiritual family. There's all these people out there. They don't have spiritual families. When they get depressed, they turn on the television. When they get depressed, they take Prozac. Seriously. They don't even have, they don't have people they can call. There's all these old people out there. Their families have abandoned them. There's young people out there. Their families have abandoned them. Seriously. Latchkey children all over. Mothers and fathers are working. They don't even see them. They come home from school. They fix their own meal. They turn on the television. And, and who talks to them? The TV. That's their family. Friends. Their friends are on TV. Elmo and, and whoever. Barney. Barney. Those are their friends. Those aren't my children's friends. I don't want my children to have those friends. And then Barney's, you know, Barney's on Prozac as well. <laughs> He's in a crisis because... He's a purple dinosaur on television, and that's his career. <laughs> you know, he's not going anywhere else. So Barney's having an existential crisis, and he's raising your children. SubhanAllah. Oh, miskin and the mataraba. Or this poor person covered in the dust of dunya. You know, somebody bereft of spiritual guidance. They're covered in the dust of dunya. Matraba, Torab. Dunya is dirt. That's what it is. The Prophet ﷺ said, the only thing that will fill the son of Adam is the dust of his grave. And that's what these people, they're just consuming, trying to get more and more, and it's not, it's not fulfilling them. They're miskeen, and they're covered in the dust of the dunya. To go and help those people. Then they're from the people who believe. That, that's the project. The religion isn't, you know, it's beautiful the things that we do. Wallahi, tarawih, what a gift, you know, really, to, to pray and to have these things. It's just a beautiful thing. Fasting, all these things are beautiful. But if you look at, at, at this tradition, it's rooted in going out. And the Muslims have become a completely personal, this religion has become just me, me, me. Really. I mean, there's just so many Muslims that they think, you know, they'll read the Qur'an for themselves. There's people that can't even read Al-Fatiha. Go out and teach somebody Al-Fatiha. I guarantee you there's more reward in teaching a person Fatiha than there is in doing a, a million khatam. But people don't think about that. Just going out and taking this religion to people. You know, learn it and then teach it to others. وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْمَرْحَمَةِ Enjoining patience and enjoining compassion. SubhanAllah. It's just so beautiful. Wallahi, this, I mean, what, what a religion. And, and they're saying the Prophet didn't bring anything good? SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. 
you know, this is what they're saying about our Prophet And he never claimed to bring anything new. You know, Allah says you weren't a bid'an min al-rusul. You weren't like some new invention. You're following in the line of your father Abraham and all the other prophets. So that's what Allah is telling, right? And then, أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابَ الْمَيْمَنَةِ Those are the people of the right. In other words, when you end up at the end of the journey, if you took that aqaba, you'll end up on the right side of the road. The right side of the road. Right? That's where you'll end up. You'll be on the right side of the road. And there's people going down the wrong side of the road. You know what happens when you go down the wrong side of the road? You have a head-on collision with, with reality. That's what happens. You have a head-on collision with reality. Like they, they had a film of a little girl in the car, you know, and just head-on collision with a drunk driver. That's dunya. Because th that's what dunya is out there. It's a drunk driver. And if you're on the wrong side of the road... That's it. So that's what Allah says. You'll be on the right side. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا هُمُ أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ And those people who deny these signs, those people that go down that other road that I warned them about, those are the people on the left side of the road. That's what happens. They get to the end of the journey and they find, and then they say, you know, oh, we want to be with them. No. You know, go find some place else. You had your chance. You know, the planting harvest time is one time a year and then it's over. If you didn't plant at that time, you can't plant seeds later. They don't grow. It's amazing. That's why farmers have to know what time it is to plant. Because if they miss that time, it doesn't grow. And that's what this dunya is. This is the planting time. It's not harvest time. These people want to harvest doesn't work like that. Alayhim naru mu'sada. And they're surrounded with these engulfed in flames. That's what happens, engulfed in flames. Because they're going down the path to the fire. One path says, this road is difficult, but it ends up in paradise. This road is easy, but it ends up in hell. Th those children that choose, they want the, the cookie now. They don't want to wait to get the two cookies. That's what happens. It's like little children. It's okay for a child to make that mistake, not for an adult. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to go down the right road, inshaAllah. Zakum Allah khairan.